up everyone good morning on this beautiful day trying to get a video back up for you guys i know it's been a while we got a unit here in a cold room clean room i mean on a freezer i guess the call is this thing only runs for about a minute or so and shuts off it doesn't stay running and it's going out on a fault on all the alarms downstairs so we're gonna get into it try to figure out what's going on here this is hooked up to all kinds of different controls. I don't know if you can see well. Get that. We got hot gas valves, hot gas injection with an electronic hot gas valve in there. If I can, I'm going to try to get into and explain to you guys how hot gas injection works as well. All right, guys. So the issue I was having here was that this fan cycle control was bad. The thing was sticking in here, and it's not. Um, it wasn't putting our fans on, so. We were going out on high head pressure. Um, we have a 210 PSI headmaster in this unit, but yeah, you probably can't see it tucked way back in there. But um, you still got to cycle the fans, especially when it gets colder out. See, there's one on now. But um, you've got to keep the head pressure up for these with this hot gas injection. You can probably hear it hissing. There's our electronic hot gas valve. The hot gas lines our third line it goes downstairs into the box but these are freezers they're running minus 20 celsius it's in a lab setting um they're running such tight parameters on these that you still got to cycle the fans in the winter or the discharge gas will not be hot enough for these to run properly at least in a cold weather area parts of the country it's what we have to do we got freezers i mean coolers over here coolers down there and more freezers over there we got a big freezer over there. I just started that up a few weeks ago. And we got a couple coolers in front of that. The coolers run um, five degrees Celsius. So, and everything's in here. These are all the controls. We don't do these, but we got relays for everything. All for safety, your limits, your solenoid, your pump down switches. We've got our defrost relays, everything fan proof switches all kinds of stuff for safeties this is our little electronic board here um, we don't do this like I said the controls guys do all this stuff but that controls our hot gas if you can hear that you can hear it going in right now that's that hissing sound so the parameters are so tight on these boxes they don't even want these like a tenth I mean like two tenths of a degree off they got to be right on the money at minus 20 minus 5 it's it, it's very tight and very critical here. They monitor, they do temperature mapping of every spot in the room. It, it's crazy. It's very, very strict environments here. I wanted to also add, guys, on this. Why you see two systems here for each box is because this is what you call a lead lag system, okay? One of these units, they're gonna run for seven days at a time and then switch over and the other one's gonna run. It's to give them equal run time. But more importantly, it's because these are such strict environments with pharmaceuticals and things like that that they cannot have these boxes down. They gotta remain cold and at the proper temp at all times. So if one of these goes down, the other one is going to automatically kick on to maintain the temp. It's just, it's just like a safety, you know what I mean? Like one of these systems can totally you know totally run this box just fine and then they switch over it's it's more as a, a backup and as a, as a security because these cannot be down and like I said to give them equal run time they're set up on the controls to run for seven days and then they switch over to the other one um, that's the point of a lead lag system you know and what their purpose is it's just it, it's just extra security that you've got to have in really strict environments so like if something goes down the other one picks it up like these cannot be down because some of these boxes are going to have hundreds of thousands of dollars of stuff in them maybe even more same thing over there with those big you know, those big freezer units over there same thing that's a huge freezer down there same thing with that lead leg everything here is set up like that all right so we're down in the truck here guys i wish i could show you the inside of that place but i can't it's just it's a place you, you can't film inside, so you could see the settings are in, the control panels and everything. But I'm going to show you guys a little diagram here and try to explain to you this part that's very important from 
hot gas injection if um, some of you don't know I know it's not used in a lot of places but where temperature has to be very strict and right on um, hot gas injection is one of what you use it's got to be used or it won't work right so I'm gonna show you this and then try to get in to explain it to you guys a little bit more so if you remember guys on the roof we got an electronic hot gas valve up there which meters in the gas down into our evaporator that third refrigerant line comes down okay this would be your normal distributor coming right off your expansion valve and it goes to your distributor tubes um, it goes into your coil this here is your ASC port which is a just an auxiliary side connector it looks pretty much like a T sometimes it's ported inside or whatever depending on the size of your lines and everything but normally you have your nozzle in here in your distributor it's very important this nozzle has to get installed here because your expansion valve will be over here so when your hot gas gets injected from the roof it goes right in and right into your coil through your distributors it can't go through the nozzle or it won't work right it will be too restricted like if you look over here this is your correct assembly normally this wouldn't be here your ASC port you got your valve right to your distributor with this you got to have your hot gas coming in here so it goes in and what that does is that hot discharge gas mixes in in through your coil and it warms it up just a bit if you get too cold and by doing that you can regulate your coil temp and your air temp and keep it right on like I said we're at minus 20 Celsius in this freezer and it's got to stay right on the money if you don't have like hot gas injection like this your temperature will not it will not maintain it will either get too hot or too cold that's why they control them with electronic valves too on um, their, their stepper valve so you, you can meter it in just as you need it um, this is a little pamphlet that comes with those ASC ports. Um, Sporlin makes them. He, we ordered our units with Heatcraft. The factory installed these for us. I've also seen these installed wrong. They haven't put the nozzle in the right spot, and it creates a mess. So, But I've had to change these out as well and put new distributors in and everything when stuff's been wrong. So I try to just keep this because it's a good thing to have and you don't see it much. All right, what's up guys? It's good to be back um, on the ride home here. Um, I hope I did a halfway decent enough job trying to explain sort of how hot gas injection works. I mean, it's sort of more to it, but it, it, it's pretty much how I was trying to explain it. You gotta, you gotta remember, it's not hot gas defrost, it, it's hot gas injection. So they sort of work on the same principle, but they, they work different this hot gas injection is made to maintain a certain temperature it's not a constant flow it's got to be metered that's why they do it with the electronic valves because you can meter them with those stepper valves a lot better and, I mean you can only let in a little bit at a time if you want there's all kinds of sensors and controls on these things that that monitor that how much we need like say the set points minus 20 on that that thing gets to like minus 19.9 .9, minus 20 you know minus 20.1 it meters it as it needs it you know the colder it gets the more it lets in the warmer it gets it backs off so these these have electric defrost these particular ones these freezers it's not hot gas it's electric defrost in those the coolers run all the time like 24 7 they never shut off because you're not these boxes like this they're not made to shut off at a certain set point they're made to maintain a certain set point so they they stay there they stay running except for defrost on the freezers um, if you guys got any more questions on it um, whatever let me know in the comments or send me an email or whatever DM me on Instagram something like that because sometimes you got to see it to, you know it's much better when you can really see it working that's why I wish I could have showed you guys like the inside and what that all looks like with at your expansion valve there and the ASC port and all that all that stuff has to be installed properly and the orifice has to be in the right spot or it won't work it won't work right it causes all kinds of problems but on that note guys I'm, I'm hoping to get back on a regular routine here I know I haven't had a video out in well over a month um, I thank all you guys have been sticking with me and the guys from the beginning and all that and trying to get more back on track here on a better schedule I haven't been doing much service at all it's been 
crazy busy with just startups and all kinds of problem jobs and again still places where it's very hard to film like today I couldn't even show you guys the inside of that place so I apologize for that but I'm gonna try to get back on track here and um, as always guys anything like comment and subscribe if you want and I'll catch you boys on the next one